Theater of Heels, Chapter 3, Curtain Call. Four years ago. I'm so very sorry. The two still forms sprawled across the stage and didn't answer. He watched the smoke rise from their charred bodies. He aimlessly walked around them to the front of the stage. The spotlight still glared down on him, accusing. Save the dim lights coming out from the still open doors leading to the lobby, the rest of the theater remained dark. He stared at row after row of empty seats within the vast room. His voice, strong and deep, rung out across the empty theater. Sorrow, like a heavy ringing bell, once set on ringing with its own weight goes. Then little strength rings out the doleful knell. He made a shuddering gasp and grabbed the sides of his head as his knees buckled. He plopped down on the end of the stage. To speak yet to be unheard, to create but unable to share, somehow felt worse to him than the two smoldering bodies lying beside him on the stage. He gave the still forms his full attention then looked away quickly as the unwanted memory replayed itself before his mind's eye. Thomas and Lilith, who were so beautiful in life, were now burnt parodies of their former vitality. In death, their arms were still locked around each other, seeking mutual comfort in the final moments of shared terror. He shuddered. Thomas and Lilith's stage careers had just started a bud at what promised to be a meteoric rise. They were far more talented than he was at their age. In fact, despite his decades of experience, their craft was home beyond his theatric abilities now. Yet death, the great equalizer, had brought their talent low. A sob escaped him. He didn't want them to die. Not really. Maybe not upstage him so much. But to die? No. All he wanted was his moment again. To stand in the spotlight and feel his words captured the audience. Tonight was supposed to be his comeback. It was supposed to be the time when Jefferson Stewart's name rose from the ashes to become a star again. He looked at the scorch marks across the stage. No, tonight's ashes were only the precursor to his downfall. He looked out into the dark theater and spoke in his most resounding voice. Our revels are now ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit shall dissolve, and like the insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. He sobbed again, and his hands began to shake. A fog began to form at his feet. No! He hissed. Get a hold of yourself, man. Do not lose control again. Remain calm. You must remain calm. He clenched his hands and steadied his breath. He had lost count of how many times he had repeated these words. He started the mantra just after the event had transpired. He uttered it aloud, even when he couldn't find his outer voice. He yelled it to be heard over the screams of the audience, actors, and stagehands, mass flight. He shouted it over the thundering itself. After everything he lost in this night, he did not want to lose his voice too. He needed to be heard even if it was only by himself. 
That's important to you, isn't it? Jefferson looked up sharply. Electricity sparked out of his eyes. Please remain calm, Mr. Stewart. I'm not here to hurt you. The man that spoke sat in the middle of the fourth row of seats, with his feet up on the row before him. He was smartly dressed in a dark suit, but for some reason Jefferson couldn't make out his face. A sword rested over his lap. Are you here to kill me? Jefferson asked. The other man shrugged. Maybe. I guess that depends on you. Jefferson pointed at the burnt bodies. I murdered two innocent people tonight. Are you saying that such an action doesn't warrant harsh retaliation? Actually, the strange man said thoughtfully, if what my psychics tell me is true, you didn't murder anyone. Technically speaking, you committed accidental manslaughter. That is hardly a comfort for the dead, remarked Jefferson. I don't believe that is a comfort to them at all. I am told that Thomas there had left behind a wife and a six-month-old daughter. The young actress, Lilith, was the only child of her parents. Oh, dear God, I didn't know, cried Jefferson. His torso began to rumble and quake. Gray fog started to emanate from around him. Rain it in, Mr. Stewart. I know you can, the strange man said from only a few feet behind him. Jefferson's head whipped around. How did you... The other man shrugged again. Considering what you can do, you had to know that you would not be dealing with a common police officer. You're a superhero? asked Jefferson. Let's just say that I'm an interested party. Interested in what, pray tell? You, Mr. Stewart, and what you can do. You are assessing what kind of threat I am? Asked Jefferson. <laughs> Heavens no. I'm here to see if you could be any use to us. If we thought you were a threat, my team would have already taken you out of the equation. Jefferson's eyes widened. You're not alone? Nope. Where is your team? Jefferson asked, looking around wildly. They're around. The sword blade suddenly appeared at Jefferson's throat. Besides, the other man said softly in his ear, if I thought you were a threat, we would not be having this rather pleasant conversation right now, would we? Jefferson froze as he eyed the blade. He carefully said, Then what is it you want? The other man pulled the blade away. A moment later, he spoke from his original position from the fourth row seat. I guess you could say that I'm here to discuss your options. Jefferson frowned. My options? I don't understand. You are Mr. Jefferson Stewart, a veteran Shakespearean actor turned accidental killer when your life stepped into the metaphysical. The mysterious man ticked off his several fingers as he spoke. To be frank, your old career is dead as Lilith and Thomas there. Life as you know it has changed forevermore. Jefferson shook his head. I, I apologize, but I still don't understand. The other man smiled broadly. Mr. Stewart, I'm here to discuss your future. Thank you again for listening to this episode of Theater of Heels. If you'd like to read the entire story, Theater of Heels, feel free to check it out on Amazon.com or other fine book retailers. Also, if you're interested in other stories by Christopher Chansey, check out his website at ChristopherChansey.com. If you'd like to give Christopher Chansey some support, please check out the website Patreon.com slash Christopher Chansey. Until next time, keep your mask on tight and your capes on right.